Good morning. Good morning. And thank you very much. Welcome to Washington. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for standing up for defending this nation. Thank you for standing up for truth. Truth is a radical and sometimes even a revolutionary concept. And the men and women here believe in speaking the truth and addressing the threats, the perils that face this nation. You picked an interesting week to be in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just came moments ago from Kavanaugh hearings. Uh, they continue to be fiery. They continue to be a political circus. They continue to be punctuated about every two minutes uh, with some young leftists getting up in the back and screaming and yelling. Um, sometimes they're screaming and yelling things that, that make some sense. Other times they're screaming and yelling things uh, one, one as, as she was being hauled out, was just screaming, Mother Earth, Mother Earth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me know if Mother Earth will save you. I, I don't know. Um, so it, it's, uh, what we're seeing in those hearings is a manifestation of the rage, the rage that is there on the far back. And that rage is visceral. It is dangerous when you have a chunk of our nation that is consumed with hatred for the president mm -hmm. at, at a level that reason and rationality don't matter. It's simply hatred. I remember in December when we passed the tax cut. As we were voting out of the Senate floor up in the gallery, one young man called out, stop killing me. <laughs>
avowed terrorist organization, peace is not to be had. But I'll tell you the argument that I made to the president of the administration. I said, fine, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys can work some magic that I, I don't see. Okay. In any event, moving the embassy will increase the chances of peace happening. Why is that? Because moving the embassy will be seen by our friends and our enemies as a testament of American resolve. It will be seen as a step that America stands with our friends, despite being criticized on the pages of the New York Times, despite the tut-tutting of the United Nations, despite the intelligentsia wanting us not to. And that will also be seen as a sign that we will stand up to our enemies. And what I predicted to the president, I said, listen, move the embassy, we can expect our allies in the region, the Egyptians, Jordanians, the Saudis, you can expect them to speak out loudly against it. They will feel they have to because of domestic political reasons. But I said, in my view, they will be secretly and the reason they will be relieved is they will think any president, any administration with enough backbone to move the embassy to Jerusalem might, might, might just have enough backbone to also pull out of the Iranian nuclear deal. <laughs> so a couple of months ago, I had the incredible privilege. I was in Jerusalem for the opening of our embassy. It was on the 70th anniversary of the creation of the modern state of Israel. And I will tell you, I've been to Israel many times, but I have never seen, number one, the jubilation, the dancing in the streets. That was a level of celebration that exceeded anything I've, I've ever seen before. And I will tell you, at the opening, I visited with quite a few Israelis, quite a few Americans, particularly those of an older generation, those who survived the Holocaust, who were reduced to tears, and said to me over and over again, I never thought I'd live long enough to see this. Wow. It was a powerful, powerful day for America. Wow. And it was a statement that was heard throughout the world. Yep. Thankfully, the president made the right decision. The second foreign policy decision, I mentioned this close to closely intertwined, is the decision to withdraw from the Obama and Iranian nuclear deal. Yeah. I continue to believe that is the most important national security decision that has been made in the last two years. The Iranian nuclear deal was nothing short of catastrophic. Sending billions of dollars to people who want to kill us is a spectacularly bad idea. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I have jokes more than once that, that ironically, Obama may have retroactively deserved the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> because he managed to do something that, that, that for decades, if not for millennia, had proven elusive. He managed to unify the Israelis and the Arabs. All he had to do was get behind giving the Iranians nuclear weapons, and suddenly the Israelis and Arabs are both like, are you out of your minds? <laughs> it's almost like they know something the Obama White House did. Like, these guys are really nuts. Don't use them. Yeah. That deal sent over $100 billion into the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. And we know that money has been used and will be continue to use to murder Americans, to murder Israelis, to murder our allies. Within the Trump administration, there was similarly the same battle that happened over moving the embassy. The lines were identical. You had state and defense both arguing, no, 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 don't pull out of the deal, we got to keep the deal. I argued vigorously in support of pulling out the deal. One of the people who was supporting that argument was Mike Pompeo, who was then at CIA, now at State. John Bolton, who was on the outside, was very engaged in this argument as well. But it was an argument that really, within the administration, 
range. As you know, the president once again made the right decision and pulled out of the deal. It was the right step. And if you look at Iran, when the Ayatollah Khamenei says death to America and death to Israel, I believe it. Those are not merely empty words. Those are the words of a religious, radical zealot. And what I have urged the president, and we've seen since we pulled out of the deal, we've seen the Iranian economy start to go into free fall. We've seen the Iranian people escalating protests, protests that are important. There is nothing that would be a greater victory for U.S. national security interests than to see the Ayatollah of Iran. I am perfectly happy to say America should support regime change when the regime is headed by a murderous theocrat who's doing everything he can to try to kill us. And the economic pressure that the administration is putting forward is enhancing the pressure on the regime. That is very beneficial. You know, the so-called father of the Iranian nuclear program, a scientist who has since gone to meet his maker, many say at the hands of the Mossad. He had written into his last will and testament that he wanted the following words written on his tombstone. Here lies a man who sought the annihilation hatred that would drive you to write that in your will. Mm -hmm. That the only thing you want to be known for for all eternity is your deep, visceral hatred. Mm -hmm. Your murderous rage. That's why giving them millions of dollars was so dangerous. I would note that that clarity is closely related to the bill we were talking about just a minute ago. The legislation that I've introduced to designate the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we live in an era of political correctness. But during the Obama regime, it was beyond political it was an Orwellian doublespeak. <clears throat> I chaired a hearing on the willful blindness of the Obama administration to radical Islamic terrorism, where we heard, among others, from a DHS whistleblower who explained the Department of Homeland Security had edited or deleted over 800 records to remove references to jihad or Muslim Brotherhood, simply to delete them, and that it was a purge directed by the White House in writing, and they use that word purge, purge out any references. That blindness is dangerous and makes it vulnerable. So men and women here know, Muslim Brotherhood's motto is jihad is our way, and dying in the way of Allah is our highest hope. This is who some in the press and some in the political world urge us to think of as a moderate or read the Brotherhood's explanatory memorandum on the general strategic goal for the Brotherhood in North America. It says, quote, the process of settlement is a civilization jihad process. The Muslim Brotherhood must understand that their work in America is a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying the Western civilization from within and sabotaging its miserable house by their hands and the hands of the believer. Muslim Brotherhood does not hide that they are a terrorist organization. Here's what the Department of Justice said about the Muslim Brotherhood during the Holy Land Foundation trial. Quote, the government's case includes testimony that in the early 1990s, Hamas's parent organization, the Muslim Brotherhood, planned to establish a network of organizations in the U.S. to spread a militant Islamist message and to raise 
raise money for Hamas. Egypt has already designated the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. Perhaps because they've seen firsthand what that terror looks like in the slaughter that it can produce. We need that same clarity, so I thank you for urging members to pass the legislation. I would note also the administration can do this. We need to pass the legislation, but the administration can do so on its own as well. So I continue to urge the administration just as just as with the embassy and the Iran deal, the lines remain the same. The debate remains the same and the reason remains the same. There is a virtue to clarity, to clarity to standing unshakably with our friends and to standing unshakably against our enemies. I believe in peace through strength. Everyone here does. And so I thank you for your clarity and your strength because that is helping